up here on the end zone presented by TiVo. It's heading into week four. Jason Norris alongside Ian Eagle with you in New York. We're coming to you on CBSSports.com and on your TiVo DVR via TiVo Cast. And I it's the last story heading into the weekend, but maybe it's one that deserves a little bit more attention that's being given. Arizona hosting Pittsburgh, and it's not really so much about the Cardinals and the Steelers as it is about the coaches. You got Ken Wisenhunt, who's the head coach of Arizona, Mike Tomlin, the head coach of Pittsburgh. But it was Wisenhunt and Russ Grimm mm -hmm. who were in Pittsburgh as assistants for six years that were thought to get the job. They didn't get it. Wisenhunt took the Arizona job before Tomlin accepted the Pittsburgh job. And now all of a sudden you got everybody talking about coach versus coach, but they don't want to talk about it at all. They keep saying it's a non-story. This might have been the biggest upset of the offseason, the fact that either Ken Wisenhunt or Russ Grimm didn't get the Steeler job once Bill Cowher left and joined us over at CBS Sports. Mike Tomlin was brought in for an interview. It was a nice opportunity for Tomlin, who had one year of defensive coordinator experience under his belt as part of the Minnesota Vikings. Mike Tomlin was not supposed to get this job. What happened next surprised everybody in the state of Pennsylvania and most people around the NFL. Mike Tomlin met with the Rooney family and blew Wisenhunt and Grimm out of the water. He's a guy that has it, that it factor. And I think the Rooney's recognized that from the moment he walked into that room. Now, they didn't give him the job after that first meeting. They said to themselves, look, let's talk about this, bring him in for a second interview, see if it was a mirage or if there truly is a head coach there of our football team. Comes in for the second interview, and the same thing happens again. And they said, we can't let this guy go. We can't let him walk out the door without making him an offer and making him the next head coach of the Steelers. Wisenhunt and Grimm never expected this. They figured it was a two-man race. One of the two would get it. And Wisenhunt, it worked out, goes out to Arizona. Grimm, it worked out. He's working with Wisenhunt right. in Arizona, being well compensated. But nobody could have predicted that Mike Tomlin would have gotten this job over those two guys. Wisenhunt was the offensive coordinator in Pittsburgh. Grimm, the offensive line coach and assistant, and assistant head, head coach, head coach to, right. to Bill Cowher, which is why you know it's more of a surprise he was the assistant head coach. But there, it goes deeper than that because you've got four players from the Steelers of last year's team that are on Arizona. You've got four other assistants that are now, or three other assistants that are also with Arizona. So you've got a lot of people that have come from Pittsburgh. And Alan Fanica, who has said he's not going to play with Pittsburgh anymore after this year, you would assume he would try and go to Arizona mm -hmm. to be with Russ Grimm next season. So we'll see how that plays out. But uh, again, these coaches are, are they're completely downplaying it. The only person that is making it a story is Ben Roethlisberger, who, you know, back in March said he had so many disagreements with Ken Wisenhunt, and, and, you know, and, and, you know, Wiz has said, well, that's all that, that's all that Ben had to say about me, you know, and since then, Roethlisberger has, has gone on. He's backed say, off. Yeah, that. he's backed off a little bit, but, you know, one thing that I think you, that, that gets forgotten about Mike Tomlin is that, yes, he only had one year as a defensive coordinator, but he had five years as assistant with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And a big part of that was because he learned how to do the Tampa 2 defense, the cover 2 defense, and he learned it from the best. You know what, though? Beyond the football knowledge, I'm, I'm going to tell you that Mike Tomlin has a great feel for people and that dynamic. And I think he recognized going into this situation that that probably was going to be the most important aspect of the job to start. The Ben Roethlisberger scenario Look, Tomlin's only 35 years yep. old. He can relate to a lot of these guys. And I think Roethlisberger in particular, he was wounded last year, not only with Wisenhunt, but I think he and Cower had some, some tough times last season. And uh, 2006 as a whole, Ben Roethlisberger wanted to forget about his personal issues uh, in addition to the football side of things. That was the first thing that Tomlin did. He made sure that he let Roethlisberger know he was his guy. He believed in him. And in meeting with Mike Tomlin a couple of weeks ago, he said that Ben Roethlisberger is a freak of nature. No one's ever said that about him at the professional level, and he really is. I mean, that's one thing about Ben that I think that goes overlooked is physically he is a specimen. Tomlin recognized that, and, and the other big key, treats him a little differently. Yeah. And, and Roethlisberger came out and said it in our meeting. Look, I'm not the kind of guy that responds to getting yelled at. Mike Tomlin has treated me like a man. He reasons with me. He talks to me. He asks for my input. And I think that's 
a, a big reason why this team has come together as quickly and as they And he's have. listened to his input. He has. The Steelers as a whole, everyone knows, this is a running football team, but Roethlisberger, Heinz Ward, the, yeah, guys have gone, the guys have went in and said, we want to throw the football more, and they've been able to do that. Uh, you know, you, you talk about balance, 200 yards rushing a game, 180 yards passing a game. I mean, that is, we're doing exactly everything by the book. The offense is at scoring points. And, yes, you can say who have they played so far, but that, that doesn't matter. They are 3-0. and and, and one other point here is that, you know, he did the exact same thing that Bill Cowher did when he came in, and that is start 3-0. Now, it's not his players. It's the guys that uh, were before him, but he took over, and he still won, and, mm -hmm. he, and he knows what he's got to do. The other point here is Chuck Noll, Bill Cowher, they were both in their 30s when they took over Pittsburgh. That's the same situation for Mike Tomlin. Same thing. Ken Wisenhunt's in his 40s, so he had no chance. And They, were, they should have known that ahead of time. <laughs> That's what the, the final determination Age was. Age matters in Pittsburgh. The last thing uh, I'll say about this matchup coaching-wise, because I think the initial perception was that, well, Wisenhunt and Grimm, they know what Pittsburgh likes to do on the offensive end. They can scout that team. They know all about them. Well, Dick LeBeau also knows, defensive coordinator for the Steelers, maybe the best of all time, knows what Wisenhunt and Grimm like to do. And I think Bruce Arians will have some things up his sleeve, the offensive coordinator of the Steelers. So I don't say advantage Wisenhunt and Grimm in this coaching matchup. Steelers are the better football team. Uh, Pittsburgh, in my mind, wins this one, an emotional game for many of the parties involved. But uh, I like the Steelers. Yeah, I agree. I like the Steelers as well, even though they're on the road. and they're I, Part of the reason I like the Steelers so much is because they're going up against a team that it's going to play quarterback by committee. Yep. And the old saying goes, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have a quarterback. We'll find out how that works. This could be the TiVo Rewind. This could be. Next week. You want to, you want to put that down? We'll no. put this down as the TiVo Rewind. No, no. All right. we got to have Randy involved. That's part of the deal. <laughs> it's in his contract. Folks, that's it for this segment of the End Zone. Plenty more to come next week as we look forward to the Week 5 stories. You can always watch us on demand on CBSSports.com and on your TiVo DVR via TiVo Cast. Ryan Eagle, I'm Jason Horowitz. Thanks for being with us. Take care.